Raise Happy Children Intensive Week 4 and Conflict Now. Week 4 Action. In every situation, make sure that all involved like the decisions. Outline for this week's session. Overview, setting up the meeting, brainstorm, eliminate, negotiate, act, evaluate, mental rehearsal, end conflict, automatic shift, mediating. Introduction to end conflict now. You are about to learn a strategy that puts an end to fighting, to angry children, to bullying, and many more problems, troubles, and struggles, and no punishment is necessary. In your journal, keep track of your experiences and progress as you learn and apply this strategy to troubled situations with children or between children. Although you will find this strategy effective with most children, I must warn you that as helpful as this is, it is not the strategy that I use with two-year-olds. The last session in this intensive deals with working and living with two-year-olds. However, this strategy is worth learning for all other children. Even three-year-olds master it quickly. End conflict now. I am so excited to be here with you today, sharing the seven steps in the strategy, End Conflict Now. Doesn't that sound great, End Conflict Now? Well, it is great, and you get to do it, and I'm here to help you. Now, before we get started on this training, have you printed up the training worksheet? Do you have your worksheet in front of you? Good. Soon, I want you to quickly, just off the top of your head, do the first, second, and third exercises in the training worksheet. I will tell you when. This will help you while you're watching the rest of the training. It will give you a point of reference that relates to your life as we go through the steps and examples. Now, imagine this. You are with your children, but now there's a difference. Now there are no more conflicts. Can you imagine? No more conflicts. No fighting, no bickering, everyone getting along, everyone helping everyone, everyone getting what they need, everyone having a good time. Just imagine. Isn't that wonderful? Well, that's what we are going to make happen. To make this happen, you are going to learn one strategy, just one strategy. This could put a lifelong end to conflict in just one session. I know it sounds unbelievable, but it is true. It has happened. It may be rare, but it has happened. It has even happened that three-year-old children have learned the whole strategy in one lesson, enough to apply it successfully. So don't think you're in for a rough time. It's simple. If you don't resist it, it's easy. It's powerful and effective. It works if you use it. That's all it takes. You just have to use it. Remember, I'll let you know when to pause with the training to answer the first questions on the training worksheet. In just about anything you can think of, there can be differences between two people. Picture this. No one has the same point of view. That means no one physically looks out of your eyes except you. If two or more people are looking at the same thing, each person's point of view is different, if only slightly. That's not to say that we don't have many things in common, but when we have differences and do not know how to resolve them in a humane and peaceful manner, conflict develops. When the relationship between adults and children is involved, the invisible root cause comes into the picture. In case you haven't learned about the invisible root cause of problems that develop between kids and adults, in the training on the power of respect, it's this. 
It's an attitude that adults have been programmed with from the time they were children. It dictates how they are to relate to the children under their care. As an eight-year-old boy once told me, they treat me like I'm a slave. The attitude that adults have developed says, I'm in charge, I say how things go, and they go the way I want. I can make you do what I say. In fact, it's my duty to do so, and I don't care what you say. Believing that just because you are the adult, you get to have things just the way you thought of having them, without any consideration necessary for any children involved, is bound to create a situation of conflict. It's conflict waiting to happen. This attitude adds to the conflicts that develop because everyone has differences. And often people don't have the skills to resolve their differences peacefully. I'm sure you can imagine some of the differences. Differences in interests. Some of us like to read and some of us would rather play video games. Differences in beliefs. Some of us believe in the work ethic, and some of us believe that life is a playground. Differences in values. Some of us believe in cooperation, and some of us believe in competition. Differences in likes and dislikes. Some of us like chili, and some of us don't. You may say that conflicts with kids develop because the kids did something you didn't like or that made you mad or that was wrong. But the differences between you and those children are at the basis of what they did and what your reaction is. Think about it. When you are angry with your children, whether it's over bedtimes, you wanted them to go to bed, they wanted to stay up. Homework, you wanted them to do their homework. They wanted to watch TV. Chores. You wanted them to do their chores. They wanted to go to their friends, whatever the issue. Out of the situation of conflict spring all the troubles that develop between adults and children. Fighting, disobedience, whining, defiance, disrespect, abuse. Learning how to harmonize differences, resolve conflicts in a humane and peaceful manner, and actually end getting into conflicts is what this session is all about. When you learn in the other sessions in the intensive, helps everyone avoid getting into conflicts in the first place. Now is the time to stop reading. Pause this session and do the first, second, and third exercises on the training worksheet. See you when you're done. Now I'm going to share with you the seven steps toward successful, respectful, and peaceful ending of conflict. You notice that I did not say conflict resolution. I say ending of conflict. Later, you will understand why I say this. When you are starting out, I advise you to complete every step to achieve success. Soon, once you understand the process, you will be able to streamline it greatly. It becomes a spontaneous process. No writing, no lengthy brainstorming, just getting right to the win-win solution. Then follow up when and as necessary. It consumes minutes, even just seconds of time. It is understood and accepted that each person deserves to have a satisfying experience. And you have all the tools and skills to make this happen. Now, on with the strategy. First, I'm going to share the meeting version. Here, you decide when to have a meeting to address a conflict. With the spontaneous version, when it takes place is determined by the circumstances. Here are the seven steps that we are going to cover. Setting up the meeting, the guidelines, brainstorm, eliminate, negotiate, act, evaluate. Step one, setting up the meeting. 
Now we get into the details, emphasizing what's important and why it works. Unfortunately, too many people think that if they are having a problem, it's a problem for everyone. Some people even take the attitude that they are going to make it a problem for everyone. Be sure to have your training worksheet in front of you. You may want your journal too. If you haven't done this already, please pause and answer questions 1, 2, and 3 on the worksheet. Done? Great. This can help you have your own focus as we go through the steps so that your understanding, your notes, and your thoughts can relate to your own situation. So, let's say that you've decided that it's time to have your first session. Be sure you have the issue written on your worksheet. I don't know what particular issue you have chosen to deal with, but the whole strategy and all the steps involved will be clearer if you deal with only one issue the first time. You can deal with more. I've mediated multiple issues in minutes. But until you are familiar and comfortable with the process, you might find one issue enough. Be sure that the time and place chosen for the session is agreeable with everyone involved. Since you are setting up the session, ask everyone if the time and place of the meeting is fine with them. Usually the timing will be the main concern for everyone, but some people may not like certain places or may prefer certain places. It's very important, even when you are setting up the meeting, to let everyone know what you're going to deal with and that only decisions that everyone likes will be made. This is the essence of the strategy. This is why it works, why it ends conflict. So don't forget to emphasize this feature. If someone does object to a time or place, it's important that a mutually agreeable time and place be found before you hold the session. If someone is just reluctant to participate, you have several options. If they object to the time or place, you can offer several different possibilities. If they continue to object, ask them to suggest an agreeable time or place. If you are not pressed for time, Continue asking them periodically if alternate times or places agree with them. Go ahead with the session without them, but let them know that decisions made are binding to them also. Let them know that if they don't like the decisions, another session can be scheduled. Get creative. Come up with your own plan. If you have decided to go ahead with a session and someone who will be affected by decisions made at the session does not intend to be there, when they realize that the decisions that are made are binding to them too, they might agree to take part. However, if you properly emphasize and explain that only decisions that everyone agrees with will be made, most people agree to take part. Be sure to make it clear that if a decision is made that they don't like, another meeting can be set up to change that decision. Let everyone else at the session realize that that is a possibility. That might actually be a good thing because now they will be eager for the meeting. Be sure that you have paper and pen and a surface to write on. Step two, the guidelines. There are four guidelines that you need to cover to make sure that everyone understands them before you go on. De one, define the problem and write it down. First, state the problem. Then, check with everyone. Is this how they understand the problem? You all need to come to an agreement on exactly what the problem is before you write down the final version. After you write it down, double check to make sure that everyone agrees with the written version. It's important to get this clear and written before you continue with the rest of the process. Keeping clarity during each step of the process. Double check if there is any chance of a misunderstanding. Whose problem is it really? 
just because something is a problem for one person does not mean that it is a problem for everyone. Write down whose problem it is. Once you become comfortable with thinking of this aspect of problems, it makes things much clearer. For example, loud music may be a problem for some people and not for others. Toys all over the floor may drive some people crazy but not bother others at all. Having tuna salad and pickled beets for lunch may be torture for some people and a treat for others. Sometimes arguments develop because this distinction is not made and one person is arguing that this issue means nothing to them. Making this distinction prevents this confusion. In fact, if they do not have a problem with the situation and they are not needed to find a solution, they do not need to participate unless they want to. If they do want to participate, they might even come up with a solution. You can also use this distinction when you're inviting someone to a session by saying, I have a problem and I need your help to solve it. Would you please help me? People are much more likely to keep in a positive frame of mind if they are helping you with your problem than if they think you are saying that they're having a problem. For example, we have a problem when that issue does not cause a problem for them. So be sure to write down whose problem it is. The solution must be a win-win solution. Everyone needs to understand that no solution will be used if one person does not like it for whatever reason. Generally, there is no need for anyone to tell their reasons for not liking the idea. That idea will be crossed off the list of possible solutions. If only one part of an idea is not liked, only that part needs to be crossed off. Using it would be disrespectful to the person who does not like it. If all ideas are crossed off, or if the ideas left cannot solve the problem, you must brainstorm again. You can do it right then if everyone agrees to do so. However, it is more likely that you will have several ideas or parts of ideas to work with. For your information, in all the years I've been doing this, I have never had all the ideas crossed off when I was working with kids. No criticism during brainstorming. Explain that the next thing you are all going to do is think of how to solve the problem. Restate the problem. Tell them that to do this, you are going to do something called brainstorming. You're going to think of as many ideas as you can that might solve this problem. Each person is going to say their ideas out loud and you are going to write them down. Before you start brainstorming, everyone needs to understand that during the brainstorming, no one criticizes any idea. No matter how silly, horrible, impossible an idea is, no one says anything about it. Please, no comments. This helps keep the ideas flowing. If comments are made, it can keep ideas from coming to mind. Negative comments can block the person whose idea got the comment, and it can also block other people who might be afraid of getting negative comments. Even positive comments can keep ideas from coming. They might keep other ideas from coming to people's minds and only draw ideas similar to the idea that got the positive comment. The first ideas are not always the best. Often the ideas that will be most useful, the ideas that everyone just loves, can come after the first ideas have been shared. For now, please don't say anything against any idea. No moans, no groans, no negative gestures. Make sure that everyone understands the importance of this and agrees to it. All ideas are written down. If anyone has trouble with this, remind them that the idea will not be used if someone does not like it. It will 
be crossed off the list later. Step three, brainstorm. Brainstorm for solutions. Encourage your children to think of solutions for the problem. Now, let's think of how we can solve this problem. Then pause and look at your children. If no one else is ready to begin the brainstorming, you begin it. Start by stating the exact solution you'd like. Let the brainstorming begin. Write down every idea, no matter how strange, no matter how silly, no matter who likes it or not. When no one can think of any more ideas, you are done with brainstorming. Now you have your list of possible solutions. Step four, eliminate. It's simple. Discuss and eliminate any solutions or parts of solutions that are not acceptable to any of the participants. Cross off the idea or part of an idea. It is not usable. Using it would be disrespectful to the person who does not like it. This is the heart of the strategy. Without this step, this strategy has no serious power. It might work without it, but in a limited fashion. This empowers everyone equally and completely. This is what makes believers out of all participants. This is what brings troubled teens to the table and other reluctant people. This creates a foundation of mutual respect and trust. It opens minds to understanding others' points of view. It brings harmony and peace to my, peace of mind to all participants. Getting rid of unwanted ideas makes this a true power of respect strategy. I promise you that three-year-old children have learned this strategy enough to begin using it on their own in one or two sessions. They might not have remembered all of the steps, but they understood the essence of the strategy. Find what works for all involved. Step five, negotiate. Negotiate, decide on acceptable win-win solutions. Maybe one idea or parts of several ideas will fit together to make a mutually agreeable plan for a solution. Be sure the decision is written down and that everyone understands it in the same way. Don't rush or skip this step. This is very, very important if it is to work. Misunderstandings cause a huge number of problems, huge. Once you all agree on the ideas of use, on the ideas to use, now is the time to weave them into a plan that is agreeable to everyone. Who does what, when, how? Just do the best you can. If the plan seems good to everyone, put it into action. After you try it out, if you find that you need to tweak it or completely revise it, you can. This is such a valuable skill for everyone to master. Step six, act. Put the solution or solutions into practice. Be sure that you have written down what each person is going to do so no confusion develops later. For example, if someone says, you said you were going to blah, 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 you can say, no, I didn't. I said I was going to do this. Come look, we wrote it down. You might want to write this on a calendar or even make a special chart. Decide how you would like, how you all would like to keep track of who is going to do what, when, and any other details involved in the solution. Be sure you agree when you are going to meet again for the follow-up meeting so you can report to each other about how the plan is working for you. This will be one of the first actions. Plan to meet after there is enough time to know if the plan is working. For some plans, it might be later that day. For other plans, it might be in a month. 
make sure that everyone agrees to this also. It might be good for one of you to be responsible to remind the others that the meeting is coming up if that is agreeable with everyone. That person could also help if a time change or any other kind of change is necessary for the follow-up meeting. Step seven, evaluate. Meet again and evaluate the success of the solution or solutions. At the end of your meeting, at the end of your original meeting, you scheduled a time and place to meet for your follow-up meeting so that you can all report on how the solution is working for you. You not only scheduled the meeting at a time agreeable to all, you made sure that you scheduled it after you had enough time to actually see if the plan was going to work. If everything is going well for everyone involved, continue on. If anyone is having problems with the plan, maybe you can just tweak it, make little changes. If it's a bigger problem, go through the seven steps again to find something that seems like it will work better. This important step of the strategy is one that might get forgotten because it is not happening during the meeting. However, if it has been written and posted, it is not likely to be forgotten. Also, if someone doesn't like the way things are going, they're likely to speak up about it, and you might even have to meet sooner. Mental rehearsal. Now let's do a mental rehearsal. This is a valuable practice. Not only while you're learning the power of respect, but in other aspects of your life. In your mind, imagine what you are intending to do. Olympic athletes do this to improve their game. Now let's get started. Be sure you are sitting comfortably and have the time and energy to do this exercise. If not, do it later. As you're listening, Pause periodically. Close your eyes while you take the time you need to picture what you are intending to do as clearly and vividly as possible. If you prefer, you can write or record this exercise as you visualize it. If either of these activities helps you more than just visualizing it in your mind. Picture yourself in the scene as you would if you were really participating in this. Don't see yourself as if you were watching yourself on TV. The situation as, see the situation as you would if you were in it, really in it, looking at it through your eyes. Imagine this going just as you would like it to go. Let's begin. Remember the problem that you thought you might like to work on first. You are going to imagine that you are going through the whole process. First, approach the child or children you're going to have this session with. Let them know that you are having a problem and that you need their help. Or if you have chosen a problem that you think they might like to work on, you can tell them that you've noticed that they don't seem to like whatever it is and that you've learned something that might help make it better for them. Set up a meeting time and place that's agreeable for everyone involved. Imagine that everything goes smoothly for this session. If you have not done so already, Close your eyes and visualize the situation so far. You have printed out the guidelines for the meeting and are very familiar with the procedure. You have your paper and pen and writing surface. Now everyone is gathered and ready to go. Imagine everyone listening attentively. Thank them for being part of this or for helping you out. Let them know that the most important thing that you want them to know about what you're going to do 
is that only decisions that you all like will be chosen today. You are not going to ask them to do things that they don't want to do, and you are not going to do things that you don't want to do. Go quickly through the seven steps to give everyone an overview. Imagine everyone excited and eager to use this strategy. State the problem, making sure that everyone understands it. Check out the understanding. Remember, too many problems come from misunderstandings. Write down the problem. Ask if there are any questions about the problem. Explain brainstorming. We are going to think of as many ideas as we can about how to solve this problem that I'm having. I'm going to write down every idea that any of us has, even if I don't like the idea, because I know that later we'll cross off any idea that someone doesn't like, any idea. Now, it's very important that while we're brainstorming, no one says that they don't like an idea. Wait until we come to the crossing off part. If someone says anything against an idea, it might keep the good ideas, the ones you would like. It might keep them from coming into someone's mind. Everyone understand? Everyone agree? Or something like that. You put it in your own way. Now it's time to start brainstorming. Imagine some of the ideas that might come up. Imagine writing them down. If at this point you would actually like to write these ideas down, feel free to do so. However, at some point, be sure to close your eyes and visualize the process. When no more ideas are coming, now we're going to cross off any ideas that someone doesn't like. Remember at the beginning I said that no one is going to have to do what they do not want to do. Imagine who might not like what ideas or parts of ideas. See what you have left to work with. If you have written down the ideas and would actually like to cross some off, knowing that someone would object to them, do so. Just be sure that at some point you close your eyes and visualize the process. Propose a plan of action based on the idea or ideas that you have left. What would each of you have to do to ensure that it works? Write things on a calendar. Be sure that everyone understands their part. Set up a time for reevaluation. Visualize the plan being written and posted. Visualize how well the plan is working. Everyone doing their part, getting their needs met, and enjoying the process. Imagine the follow-up meeting, everyone reporting how well it's going for them. Imagine how happy everyone is. So, how did your rehearsal go? Do you feel more confident? Do you have a better understanding of how this process goes? Practice this mental rehearsal as frequently as you like for as many different situations as you'd like. It's fantastic how quickly this process brings harmony and eliminates conflict. I remember three-year-old children mastering this strategy with just one or two lessons. I also remember my three teens and tweens never fighting just solving their potential conflicts within minutes, even seconds. Both of these situations came about because the people involved understood the essence of the strategy. Any solution must be agreeable to all involved, period. Ending conflict. This is the amazing, unexpected result of using this simple power of respect strategy. You have put an end to conflict. You and your children have learned and used so many power of respect tools and skills by using this one power of respect strategy. You have all accepted that you each deserve to have it how you want it. You have learned skills to help you communicate clearly to write things down, 
helping keep communication clear that if it isn't good for one of you, it's not an option. To take action, mutually acceptable action, how to brainstorm, to negotiate, the great essential importance of follow-up. None of you go back to how it was. You and your children are now different. When there are differences in needs, wishes, and values between you and your children, those differences immediately bring up the need to find a mutually agreeable solution. No longer do any of you go into fight-for-what-you-want mode. Everyone accepts that it's possible to find a win-win solution. They've done it at least once. Everyone knows that it is much, much better this way. The automatic shift. This shift can happen after one good session. This has happened. Or it may take a few. But it does not take very many to learn these simple skills. The most important skills everyone learns immediately because everyone wants to have it their way it has to be win-win. Cross it off if you don't like it. This process may seem time-consuming, but once everyone is practiced at it, you can eliminate the writing and finding agreements becomes almost automatic. Then the peace in the family seems worth all the efforts at changing in the beginning. Karen Rose's column book, The Power of Respect. This is what happens when people understand and accept the process and practice it a little, it shifts into another gear. It becomes a spontaneous process. No writing, no lengthy brainstorming, just getting right to the win-win solution, then follow-up when is at and as necessary. It consumes minutes, even just seconds of time. It is understood and accepted that each person deserves to have a satisfying experience, and you all have the tools and skills to make this happen. Mediating for children. Mediating for children might easily be your first use of this power of respect strategy. If this is the case, it's most likely because they are having trouble at the moment. It's always harder to jump into a problem than to deal with one calmly at a time when emotions are not running high. However, jumping into a problem is often necessary, and sometimes it might bring even better, quicker results than if you did have a chance to introduce this strategy during a stress-free time. One of the best ways to jump right in is to ask your children, does anyone need some help or something similar? At this point, almost always, at least one child will speak up, eager to tell their side of the problem. Occasionally, they really do want to handle the situation themselves, or maybe they do not trust the adult help in these cases, they will not ask for help or want to tell their side of the story. If they do not want help, observe them discreetly to make sure they're safe and can really solve the problem to everyone's satisfaction. If necessary, approach them again. Let them know that it does not seem that they've solved the problem so that they all feel good. Let them know that you can help them with that. If they do want your help, after listening to what they have to say, you can let them know that you know how to help them fix this so that they all get to feel good. When you go to mediate a situation, be sure to take away to write ideas. It's helpful if you've already introduced this strategy, strategy to your children. If you have not had a chance, tell your children that when they are having problems, you are going to help them solve the problems so that they all like the solution. Don't worry, you can still jump in and have a very successful mediation. 
Remember, the jump-in version is highly effective with younger children. Just remember the steps, but be ready to be flexible when and if the situation calls for it. Although there are several important, valuable skills involved in this strategy, if the children you are helping want to and initiate going right to finding the win-win solution before going through all of the steps, go for it. They have just shortened the learning curve. I learned of this possibility from three-year-old children. Later, they can learn brainstorming and negotiation and the other skills learned in this strategy. But if they want to go for it, right for the prize, to the treasure of this strategy, be aware of this possibility and encourage it. This brings harmony to your children. Instead of seven steps, they use two steps, awareness of their differences and an instant win-win solution. Now I'll go some, over some of the variations you might encounter in the spontaneous meeting. Step one, spontaneous meeting variations. With a spontaneous session, you might have to deal with more than one issue. You can deal with more. I've mediated multiple issues in minutes. It would be good if you at least have several mental rehearsals before your first actual session. Hopefully, you get to your children when they're having a problem before it is fully developed. If a disagreement or even a fight has already started, go to them immediately. Tell them, it seems like you need some help. If that doesn't get an immediate response, does anyone want my help? I can help you fix this so that each of you is happy with it. It's very important to let everyone know that only decisions that everyone likes will be made. This is the essence of the strategy. This is why it works, why it ends conflict. So don't forget to emphasize this feature. Be sure that you have paper, pen, and a surface to write on. A small notebook will do. Step two the guidelines variations. There are four guidelines that you need to cover and do your best to make sure that everyone understands them. If you need to move more quickly through the steps, you can skip ahead, but if at all possible, introduce the guidelines at some point. One, define the problem and write it down. It's better if you can write it down, but in the spontaneous version, you might not be able to. The rest of this lesson remains the same as the meeting version.